Welcome to another devlog for Towercraft, a roguelite tower defense game with a unique tower customization system. I've finally finished the prototype that was made in Dreams, and in this video I'll be going over what's in it, and then talk about additional features that I plan on adding to the full version. It took 21 streams, spread out over three months, to finish creating the Dreams prototype, and I was able to pack a ton of stuff into it during that time. You can play it right now, by the way, if you have a PlayStation and the game Dreams, link below. In this first section, I'm going to go over the entire prototype, so it should give you a really good idea of what this game is about. Let's start with the tiles. There are two types of tiles, path and tower. Path tiles allow you to grow and split the path the enemies take, and tower tiles give you a spot to place a tower. Tiles also have a biome associated with them. Currently, the biome only affects what enemies spawn. For example, for every tile with the plains biome, one additional slime will spawn per round. Each wave, you choose from 10 random tiles that appear at the bottom of your screen. You're able to place up to four of them. Tiles must be placed adjacent to existing tiles, and path tiles must be connected to an existing path tile. You are stopped from blocking off your last dead end, but if you really want to, you still can. Although doing so will soft lock the game, as there is no way to remove existing tiles once they're placed. Enemies spawn from portals, which are created at every dead end. Portals are also created if you make a closed loop. The more portals you have, the faster the enemies spawn. I was able to add eight normal enemies, two mini bosses, and three bosses, each having a unique combination of base stats and abilities. The bosses don't spawn on predetermined waves. Instead, three boss tiles are placed randomly across the map, and connecting your path to them spawns the associated boss in the next wave. I love this mechanic because it gives the player agency. Normally, tower defenses are a slog, but with this mechanic, it's now a race. You want to spawn and kill the bosses as soon as you're able to, because you win the run when you kill all three. There's also a treasure tile that gives you 300 gold and a perk if you connect your path to it. Killing bosses also gives you a perk, by the way. There are five unique perks to choose from, and they range from giving you two free towers to disabling all forms of health regen on enemies. That covers pretty much everything except towers, so let's talk about them for a bit. Towers can be bought by clicking on tower spots, and there is only one type of tower. Its cost starts at 30 and increases by 30 for every tower you have. Although there is only one tower type, they can be heavily customized using items dropped from enemies. Enemies have about a 30% chance of dropping an item and some enemies are guaranteed to drop an item. Towers have three different sections, the projectile, the barrel, and the base. Sections are further split up by having a single model slot and multiple modifier slots. The model is what the section is and cannot stack. For example, the projectile model is, is kind of like what the tower shoots. For example, an arrow, a laser, a missile, etc. The barrel is how it shoots. So like single shot, double shot, tri shot, hex shot, etc. And the base model drastically changes a tower's stats. So like heavy base will deal way more damage, but shoots way slower. And then like a rapid base shoots faster, but deals less damage. Modifiers, on the other hand, don't really affect the towers as drastically, but they can be stacked, allowing you to create some extremely powerful towers. Towers have five stats, damage, fire rate, range, projectile size, and aim speed. You can increase these by leveling the tower up or equipping it with items. The stat bonuses from items currently stack additively with each other. There are two sets of high scores, Quickest win and highest wave. Quickest win is the earliest wave you can kill all the bosses. Highest wave is what wave you can get to before you lose. Speaking of which, I don't think I mentioned how you lose. When enemies reach your castle, you take one damage if it's a normal enemy, three for a mini boss, and you instantly lose if it's a boss. The castle has 10 HP, and when it reaches zero, you lose. I also made a tutorial explaining all of this. I wasn't even planning on really making a tutorial because this was a prototype, but I realized a lot of people who wanted to try the game had literally no idea what they were trying to do, which by the way is not their fault at all. And that's pretty much it. That's everything I was able to add to the prototype. Although the game pushes Dreams' limits really hard, despite a ton of optimizing, I am very happy with how it turned out. All of these game design decisions that I made will no longer need to be made when creating the Godot version. This will make its creation go way smoother. Also, the community feedback I got was overwhelmingly positive, which solidifies my belief that this game is worth making and I'm not just wasting my time. 
Because this was a prototype with the main purpose of testing if the core game idea was actually fun, it's not a bad thing that I wasn't able to add everything I wanted to. With that said, let's talk about some of the features that I want to add to the Godot version that aren't in the prototype. Let's start with the features that should have been in the prototype, but were not because of Dream's limitations. There are three main ones. The first is biome combos. The idea is that tiles have a biome, and if you place certain biomes in certain combinations, you get an effect, good or bad, or both. The problem was actually checking if the combo was actually made. The amount of logic that the tile placer needed in order to check if a combo was made was like a lot. And, and frankly, the effort it would have taken was not worth it. The second is better stat scaling and balance. Because of the nature of Dream's logic, it is extremely tedious to set up a stat system and changing that system is just as tedious. I'm fully aware the, current, uh, the way it currently is isn't ideal, but getting into a balanced state, it just it wasn't worth it because of how long it would have taken. And the third thing is tower target priorities. This just can't be done in Dreams, just straight up. There are some solutions that do an okay job, but because the map is built by the player as you play, those solutions wouldn't have worked. Now let's get into some of the features that I had no plans on adding to the prototype, either because the prototype just didn't need them or because I hadn't even thought of them until playing the prototype and getting feedback. This can probably go without saying, but more enemies, biomes, items, perks, etc. I have a ton of really awesome ideas for new content and I can't wait to make them. A second is multiple different levels. Each level could only have like three or four biomes as opposed to all of them. Since there are only three or four biomes, then there will also only be about four or five unique enemies, forcing the player to adapt their strategy to what those enemies will be. A third is a tutorial that is weaved into the actual game, instead of being its own separate thing. Player onboarding is so important to get right, especially in a game with complex mechanics like this one. So a combination of weaving it into the game and just having like um, detailed tooltips is I think the right way to go. How about meta progression? I personally hate meta progression for power level in roguelites. It makes no sense. Making the game easier the more you play is completely backwards in my opinion, but I, I, could, I could rant about that for like hours. Um, but anyway, the more you play in Towercraft, the more items you get access to. That, that's how I want it to work. This increases variety and gives you something to work towards but doesn't just outright make you stronger. I'm also considering a completely different way to, to actually get items in game. Currently you get them from killing enemies, but what if there was some sort of auto battler type store? And if you don't know what that is, basically uh, it's, like, it's like a store, right? With, with like five items and then you can refresh the store for gold to, to give you more items. Um, and then you can spend gold to level up the store so that when you refresh it again, there's a higher chance to get rarer, like to get better items. Um, I, I really like this idea. I did not test it in the dreams version, obviously, but um, I, I am heavily considering it. Also, each section having its own modifier slots feels needlessly complex. Maybe just a projectile barrel and base model slot and then just like three or four modifier slots not bound to a section. This will make things way more straightforward and it would give the player more freedom. Another thing is a new type of item that permanently binds to a tower. This will add even more ways to customize and strengthen the towers, which is the main draw of the game. Maybe we could have challenge levels. So for example, there could be a level where there are pre-placed tower tiles and you can only place path tiles. Or, or maybe a level with just a single biome. Uh, maybe a level where every path tile is a fork tile. Stuff like that. I think it would be cool if your castle, the thing you're trying to protect, was also like a tower, or, or maybe some sort of hero type unit that you can choose before you start the game, and each hero has, has like a passive attack and an active ability. This would, um, this would also give players something to customize. And it would also be another thing uh, meta progression can be applied to. And finally, um, 
along with like boss tiles and treasure tiles, I I'd like to also see like challenge or quest tiles. You connect a path to one and, and you're given like a challenge that you have to try to complete. And if you do, you get, you get a reward. So that's it for my list. But do you guys have any ideas for additional features? If you do, please share them in the comments. A good amount of these additional features that I've talked about were actually either from the community or, or at least inspired by a community member's idea. Also, I've been thinking about doing a Kickstarter for the game. Not anytime soon though, but uh, the plan would be to create a fully polished demo in Godot and then use that to drive traffic to the campaign. I would implement every core feature in the demo and the funds would then be used to create more content basically. So like more biomes, items, enemies, levels, etc. Uh, the more I think about it, the more it makes sense, but I'm curious to hear what you guys think. The devlogs from here on out will be of the Godot version and they'll be about like specific features um, I implement and the game design decisions I make. So definitely look forward to those. I'm streaming the development of Towercraft on YouTube and Twitch, so if you want to see me work on projects live and have an actual impact on them, make sure to watch. That's it for this devlog. Have a great rest of your day, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.